Our scripture is Luke 1, 46 to 50. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will, be, will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Amen. I hope you were listening. That particular piece of scripture for me is so amazing because it comes from what uh, biblical scholars believe is a young lady. So kids, if you think that uh, Mary uh, was like an old lady when the angel came to visit her, <clears throat> think again. Scholars believe she may have been as young as 15. Okay, this was a, a first marriage. This was uh, in, in, in a community where uh, when, a, when a young man was bar mitzvahed, and a, a young woman was bat mitzvahed, then you were free to marry after that. You were considered adult parts of the congregation. So this, this prayer that, that we find in Luke is, is, is coming from a young lady. And it is this young lady that we focus on today because... She became a mother when she was asked by the Holy Spirit through an angel to be the mother of God, to be the human receptacle. So on a micro level, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I talked about last week. Barry, by the way, thank you so much for, for getting the kids to tell their moms thank you for the love that they have received. I'm going to go back to last week where, if you remember, I directed the kids' attention to the leaves outside and the tiny, tiny little holes in each of those leaves known as stomata or tiny hole in Latin, <laughs> little opening. Uh, and it's those little openings that come out of which come oxygen uh, and in which go carbon dioxide. And so there is a micro level upon which this world is built. And, and so this moment, I want you to see when the angel comes to Mary and says, you have been chosen. And, and, and she says, may it be to me as you have said. I want us to think on a very personal level today and say to ourselves, this is, this is what we too can say when God comes to us. This is what we too can say. Love you, Frank. Love you so much. When the Holy Spirit comes to us and would like to dwell in our hearts and says, you know what? As a child of God, you, you are favored with life. I was talking about that just a moment ago with respect to our mothers who decided to have us. We can say, thank you, God, for giving us life. Thank you on a micro level for giving us life. We are who we are because we have electron microscopes that tell us who we are. We know about the DNA chain now. We know that, that there are certain modifications in that DNA chain that can make even what look like identical twins not identical. So on a micro level, you have, you have this, this acceptance of who she is going to be and what is going to happen even though she doesn't know how it's going to happen. Let me ask you, do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? I think we all have plans. Uh, I know Chris and I, we talk about the weekend and we talk about what we're going to do and you know, we, 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 have, we have plans to go and see a, a, a great aunt. 
you have plans too, but you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So even on a very, very small level, micro level, you don't know the future, and neither do I. So it's understandable that when Mary is talked to by the angel, she says, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Mary, Mary is willing to have the Spirit of God hover. Have you seen these new boards that kids are riding, even adults? They're not exactly like Back to the Future hoverboards, but they've got these wheels in them, and depending on how you balance like this. Maybe some of you have the idea that you would like to have one too. Uh, I would strongly suggest a helmet and elbow pads. But as you lean, they go forward. The, the old ones, uh, I took a tour of Washington DC on the old ones. They had a stick coming up and a handle. And as you bent them this way and that, then you would go forward. The Spirit of God hovered, it says. And this thing happened on a micro level between God and humanity. Now, I had the privilege of visiting some people yesterday uh, that are not part of this congregation, but, but one of them talked about the time that he was at a retreat when uh, he felt a presence kneeling beside his bed Spirit of God hovering. This is a very, very personal, very, very intimate moment. And as a result, we have what we, in theological terms, even in very basic terms, understand as the God-man. We have the, the God of the universe, the Almighty One, putting on human DNA. So you say, Pastor, uh, what, what, what about those two genealogies? Yep, there's one in Matthew and there's one in Luke. So who's who? Well, scholars still argue about this. Was it Mary's or was it Joseph's? That's for you to decide in your, in your study it's a very interesting study to look at that, those genealogies and to see that there are different names involved. So when that moment happened on a very micro, micro level, very intimate level between God and humanity, God joined with humanity in a way that if we believe Ellen White's statement that says that Jesus is going to stay in human form... He will be recognizable in human form forever. I wonder if he knew that when he decided to save this race in the universe. This race that had been made in his image. This race in whom God decided to incarnate and become look, one that looked exactly like us. Well, the Bible says, wasn't a particularly beautiful person. In fact, the word root, not Groot, although that would probably be a good one, because Groot is a root, but Groot, root, he says, he, he wasn't really that good looking, he was like a root out of dry ground. So I've done some gardening, you've done some gardening. Did you pay attention to the root that you picked up and threw in the trash? No, 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 you paid attention to the rose. <laughs> and Jesus wasn't the rose, he was the root. He puts on regular humanity for our sake. He has this micro-relationship with Mary that means that he can have that same micro-relationship with you and with me. There's also the macro. 
the, 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 the micro that you can't see unless you have a very powerful electron microscope, and the macro that we look at with huge telescopes. And then last week, if you remember, I told the kids my favorite nebula out in space is the Eagle Nebula. It's huge. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's got beautiful colors. Uh, you know, they say that that's because of the, the, the huge gas fields that are up there. And, and, and so I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm so intrigued by the, the big as well, the, the huge. And, and it, it definitely informs my idea of who God is because if I'm going to say that he, he made the, the little tiny, that he also made the huge, then that tells you a little bit about how I think of God. And so on a, on a huge level, we, we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that the Spirit of God hovered. I love the hoverboard idea. He hovered. He brooded. Would you, would you like the chicken idea? How many of you have ever kept chickens? My father decided we should have chickens in England. We were allowed to have chickens so long as he didn't have a rooster. He was not always an, an obedient person. When he saw that beautiful white rooster with beautiful green tail plumage, his heart was immediately in love and he brought Roosty home. I did learn through this experience what it means to be henpecked. Sorry, ladies, I know it's your day, but uh, <clears throat> the boy lost his tail feathers and my dad had to rescue him and bring him into the house where the relationship became even more intimate and loving and kind. And he grew new tail feathers and then he put him back when he was bigger into the chicken run and, and, and there he became the, the top chicken. And he began to crow. Well, the, the neighbors had said, we'll take the brown eggs that you give us. They're really great, but we don't want to hear a rooster at 3.30 in the morning. Let's just say that um, <clears throat> he sure tasted good when mom made chicken and rice. Yeah, yeah. Learned there ain't much meat on a free-range chicken. For sure. He... Taught us, the chicken thing taught us as a family what it means to be a broody hen. A hen doesn't leave the nest, it sits on its eggs, it, it hovers over the eggs, it makes a nest so that, so that it's just right. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that women are like this, but I'm also going to say very much that in this new age, men can be like this too. That there can be this desire to be careful with that which has been entrusted to you. And you can hover over it. Well, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we, we, we get an inkling, ladies and gentlemen, about how God felt about making this world. You see all three characters there. We're told that in John chapter 1 as well, that the Spirit of God is there. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Elohim. That's the plural. Elohim. The Godhead is there, and the Spirit of God hovers over the waters. As we look at the first day, we realize that it is light that is made on the first day of creation. And it is light, my friends, that the prophets said would come into the world when the Savior came into the world. So if you think about it, Mary's interaction on that micro level, Mary's willingness to have the God of creation come and inhabit her was an acceptance of that light that was to come into the world the world. And God said, let there be light. And God came to one young lady 
who had never known a man in her life, in fact, who was engaged, who was about to be married and then would have known intercourse with Joseph, but was told, wait, let that be your second child. Joseph had to be told too, because when he was told that Mary was with child, his normal, natural, we think, oh my, why would he do that? No, he didn't understand. He had to be told, wait, the child that is within her is of the Holy Spirit. Wait until that child is born, and then you may have as many children as you like between you and Mary. Some scholars believe this may have been a second marriage. We don't, we don't know whether the people who are, t- are told to us in Scripture that, that are the brothers of Jesus, there are references to the brothers of Jesus. We don't know whether those are also sons of Mary or sons of another wife, but they were related to Jesus by family. You have the micro, where you have the very personal, and you have the macro, where you have the magnificent that refers back to creation. Here you have uh, an an opportunity on this day uh, to... Look at mothers as being that link between God and humanity. For sure, for sure, your mother is your link to the eternal. Just think about that for a moment. God gave you life in your mother's womb as a gift to your parents as a way of saying, I will bless your DNA and your DNA as they get together. I will bless that and there will be another human being created in their image by my power. So mothers, you you get to uh, have this thing that I suppose uh, we, we men are a little jealous of. You get to have this thing happen to you where where you have this other human being inside you. This this joining of the DNA between you and your spouse, and, and you have this ability to feel this child moving within you. As an older brother, I was privileged to, to watch my younger brothers and their fists and their heels going across my mother's belly. Then I watched my own daughter's fists and heels as she moved around and Chris was, oh, look, she's moving. And and you're thinking, this is the smallest apartment she'll ever live in. (laughs) And so that's why we use words like delivered. (laughs) Thank God I've been delivered from what? Well, delivered from, from this situation. And so it was on that night that we celebrate at Christmas time that the only person around to aid Mary was Joseph, Jesus' stepdad. Ever thought about that? Jesus growing up and everybody in the village knowing that Joseph was not his dad? Jesus having to go through life being called bastard? You don't really know who, we don't really know who your daddy is. He did that. He did that for you and for me. He did it intimately. And he, he joined the micro with the macro for us. So let me, let me put this thought in your head because it's, it's run around in my head this week and, and There's a macro picture here that has to do with us as a church. And and when I say us, as a church body. Because you see, God comes to us as humans personally, but he also comes to us corporately. 
And he asks, will you allow me to inhabit you corporately? Now, as, as an Adventist church, we, we talk a lot about uh, some of the things that we think are special about us and, and, and what our job is and why we exist. And I believe a lot of that is because we, we have this feeling that God has chosen us. Well, I believe he has. I believe, I believe he has chosen a people in the world, and that people may or may not be Adventist. But he has chosen to interact with people and ask them to go and tell the rest of the world that he is who he says he is as the creator God. He is going to come back and do what he said, which is to take us to be in another realm with him where there is no more death. And destruction. He is all of these things, and he's asked that there be a people who tell the rest of humanity who's not listening to God that this is going to happen. Because as we look at Scripture, every time God said, This is what's going to happen, unless it was conditional, and believe me, there are several situations that are conditional. Everything that he said would happen has happened. So we can trust that when God says, I'm going to come back, we can trust that. And we can trust that on a corporate, we can trust that on a corporate level. I'll tell you what, it's, it's super, super good news today in the confusion and the, 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 the disintegration that is taking place in this world, the, the confusion that many people have, it's really, really good news that we as a corporate body with the Holy Spirit inside can be giving the word of God to humanity. We can be sharing Jesus. Because that's what Mary did. She took care of Jesus. She and, she and Joseph ran off to Egypt when Herod tried to kill him. And then he comes back from Egypt and he lives in Nazareth. And the Bible says he was obedient to his parents. So Jesus stays with Mary. Mary raises Jesus. And then when he's 30, he says, Mom, it's my time. And he goes off into the world to do that which he was supposed to do. We get to do the very same thing. We get to incubate Jesus in our lives. And then we get to share him with the world. So on a macro level, on a, on a corporate level, you could say that as a church, we are in the business of being like Mary. We have the Holy Spirit inhabit us so that we can then share Jesus with the rest of the world. The, the, the rest of the world, by, by, by me saying that, I'm just saying a humanity that, that doesn't uh, focus on God. Because there are so many who say that they focus on God and don't. In fact, that's what we say sorry for, isn't it? Every Sabbath, I pray about it. I don't know if you pray about it on a daily basis, but that's really what we need to be asking God's forgiveness for, is not focusing on Him, not listening to Him. I mean, what if Mary had said, I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're from God, Angel. I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure. You want to do a miracle for me or something, so that I can know that what you're about to do to me is from God. Have we ever treated God that way? Maybe we have. I know some of my friends have. I know some of my friends have huge misgivings about God. So I believe it's up to us. It's up to us that have accepted God into our life and, and, and asked him to, to, dare I use the word, possess? I'm going to use the word inhabit, okay? He is, he, we've asked him in to inhabit us and, and to make us his and to let us 
be intimately related to him just like Mary was to Jesus and then to share him. We've asked for that to happen because there are those who have said no. Maybe they're in our families. Maybe they're our brothers and sisters or our uncles and aunties. Maybe they're people that we love, people that we think about often. Maybe our parents. And, and, and I know that some of you might say maybe even our mothers who have lost their faith, who have lost their way, who things have happened to. And, and so these are people we care about. And so maybe today we can make another stab at a promise. That because of what Jesus did through Mary, both personally and corporately, we will have the opportunity to share Jesus again. I don't know, I don't know what that's going to look like. For you, uh, maybe today it's going to be the giving of, uh, of a flower. Maybe it's going to be going to someone and telling them that you forgive them. I read on the internet last night of a, a gentleman who is literally days away from being executed in Tennessee. They're asking for clemency from the, the governor. And the one thing that's really pushing this is the daughter of the lady that he killed that happened to be his wife at the time. So her, his stepdaughter has come forward and has said, I forgive you. I forgive you. I don't want to be torn up inside anymore. I don't want to be dying anymore because of what you did to my mother. I forgive you. Maybe that, maybe that would be the key today. I don't know, for you, but maybe for me, that would be the key. We're hoping the governor puts a stay of execution on this gentleman. He is an elder now in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, in jail, and has his own congregation. He's ready to die if he has to. But he is hoping that he can stay alive. And there are many people who are hoping the same thing. But today, today we can give thanks. We can give thanks to our Creator God who has, through Jesus Christ, given us the opportunity to have a very intimate relationship with Him. And He has also given us the opportunity, like Mary, to share that with other people. Because He is the hope of this world. No matter what has happened, no matter who is on death row, no matter what they have done, they can be forgiven by God. And we can know that eternal life is real. Jesus said, if I die and, am I, and I'm resurrected, you too will be resurrected if you die. So we can say, like we say at many funerals, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? It's what I live with every day. You saw the picture of my wife. She had a picture of her mom there. We miss our parents that are gone. We miss our moms. Jesus says, you won't have to miss them forever. You can be back together with them. And they'll be made new, and you'll be made new, and the world will be made new, and it will be going on forever and ever. I hope that you can wrap your minds around that today, because I want you to know that I, I, I've done with struggling about that, and I've just decided to let God be a big God. So let him be a big God in your life today. Let him come in and inhabit your life. Let him give you joy. Let him give you uh, peace and, 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 and something that you can walk out of these doors on this Mother's Day weekend and say, I've got good news. Jesus came from Mary and Mary said yes and so do I. Amen? Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day.